Hello everyone, welcome back. Just watch this. What the fuck? Finally, the comment section may rejoice. I'm delivering what I promised many years ago. Payload perks, and why every hand cannon with a payload perk is immediately a candidate to be the best PvP hand cannon in the game. Yeah, I know my fellow YouTuber Kakis HD also loves explosive payload for PvE. Last week, the Time Lost Fatebringer was up for grabs from the Master Templar Challenge, and conveniently it comes with explosive payload inherently. Therefore, I decided to deliver two videos in one, both a detailed analysis of the explosive payload perk and an in-depth Fatebringer review. For the two-in-one video, I think you should click that subscribe button two times. Explosive Payload and its evil brother Time Payload are actually very rare perks on hand cannons now that the majority has been sunset. The only hand cannons which can roll these perks are the ones you see on screen right now. Out of these, the only one you can deterministically grind for is the Fatebringer. There is also the highly unique exotic 150 RPM Sunshot. Criminal Dagger is unobtainable and the other ones on this list are extremely luck based. I think it's quite unfortunate that we don't have access to more explosive payload hand cannons. After I explain to you all the benefits today, I believe you'll want to actually get one for yourself. If you missed the Fatebringer, which would have been a bad idea, you can still pull the default year one better devils from collections, assuming you got it in Forsaken. The key thing payload perks do is that they separate a portion of your bullet's damage into the payload portion. In PvP you don't get any bonus damage, it's just that the damage is split. Pay attention to the background gameplay, notice how two damage numbers show up for every shot I take. While this might seem like a funny novelty to you, it's actually the key reason for why I believe payload perks are the best perks to ever exist on hand cannons. The payload damage behaves quite a bit differently than the main bullet damage, and I'll explain all the benefits to you one by one. But before I get to those, let me share with you a couple of numbers. Explosive payload will deliver both payload and bullet damage simultaneously. Time payload will delay the payload damage by roughly 0.2 seconds. Here on screen I tallied up the exact numbers for how much damage is split into the payload. While the numbers themselves aren't super important, the thing to note is that time payload splits off a tiny tiny bit more than explosive payload. Also, since time payload delivers the payload damage later, it can extend the effective kill time of a hand cannon if you don't manage to kill your opponent with the bullet portion of the damage. As far as I can tell, on 180 and 120 RPM hand cannons, you can avoid this extension by landing all of your headshots. 140 RPM handcans currently don't even have access to time payload, but if you still have a better devils or 10 paces with this perk, just know that there is no way to avoid the 0.2 second kill time extension. In this video I'll focus on the 140 RPM handcans. 120s were recently nerfed and the only 180 with a payload perk is this thing. If you want more details on the other archetypes, let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, now, why is the payload damage so good? There are three reasons. The first and most important one is that the payload damage never experiences damage fall off. Remember the intro clip? Every weapon archetype in this game has a damage floor. This means that the bullet portion of your shots will experience some fall off until they hit the damage floor. The payload portion, however, doesn't experience any falloff. This effectively reduces the amount of damage falloff that your shots experience, which is why it is possible to kill a guardian at any arbitrary range in no more than 5 shots. This is exclusively thanks to the payload perk, both the range stat and any other range perks aren't effective at these distances. Note that the 140 RPM archetype here really is important. Sunshot, being the only 150 RPM hand can deal slightly less damage per shot, and it will need an extra 6 shot to secure the kill at extreme ranges. Now, I understand that you won't go out of your way to secure a 5 shot kill. 
though still your four-shot range is significantly better than most other hand cannons. Nonetheless, the actual reason that this is so good is that you can clean up chip damage. For example, a high-impact sniper body shot or a proximity grenade explosion can be cleaned up by a 140 RPM explosive payload body shot at infinite ranges. Notice how the palindrome fails at the cleanup here, but the fate bringer with explosive payload secures me the kill. There are many cases where your enemy is running with very little health and being able to tag them for a substantial 30 to 40 damage is very important. The second major benefit of the payload damage is the fact that it does area of effect damage. Yeah, sure, you won't be getting collateral kills on guardians like Thrall and PvE, but the AoE damage gives you an avalanche of playmaking possibilities. Titans can say goodbye to their barricades, since you can continuously damage them by shooting the corner of the barricade and dealing splash damage to them. This works with any kind of cover, you can prevent the regeneration of an enemy trying to hide. The chip damage will force people to run further back into cover, or they'll likely die to the payload damage. Especially when fighting in the air, missed shots will deal AoE damage instead of being completely wasted. You can also prime an enemy with chip damage by shooting the floor next to them before you get line of sight. 140 RPM handcans usually take 3 headshots to kill, but even if you land only 10 damage on someone in advance, that precision requirement will drop to 2 headshots and 1 body shot. Similarly, if you're dealing with multiple players, there's a decent chance that you'll have the second player slightly damaged, again reducing your precision requirement. Finally, the AoE damage is absolutely elite for game modes where heavy ammo exists as an objective. You can prevent enemies from taking heavy ammo just by dealing splash damage to them. This can delay your opponent, allowing your team to get the upper hand and ammo for air apparent. The third and final major benefit is the flinch output. When your hand can have a payload perk, every shot you take will result in your enemy getting hit by two damage numbers. However, your opponent will also get flinched separately for both damage tags. This is significantly worse for your opponent than just high caliber rounds at the magazine perk. Additionally, the visual effect of explosive payload will make a small flash on your enemy screen, making it even harder for them to aim at you. Again, if you're fighting in a 1v2 situation, you'll be flinching both your primary target and his teammate at the same time, thanks to the payload damage. Okay, so my YouTube mentor tells me that people on the internet have terrible attention span, so let me quickly summarize what the benefits are in case you forgot. With explosive payload, you get less damage drop-off, you get better performance in there, you can flinch your enemies to the moon and back, and you can deny them cover, heavy ammo, barricades, and so much more. If this doesn't sound epic to you, I don't know what will. Now that I have thoroughly brainwashed you, let me talk about the Fatebringer. Our kinetic 140 RPM legendary choices are actually very limited. The only alternative to the Fatebringer would be the Dire Promise. Comparing these two, you can see that the Dire Promise has better reload speed handling and aim assist stats, However, it's completely lacking in the range and stability department. Its perks are also significantly worse than the Fatebringer. Most importantly, Dyer does not get the explosive payload. With Rangefinder, Dyer Promise will reach round about the same ranges as a base Fatebringer, not accounting for opening shot or explosive payload. Its stats are just that much worse. So if you went with the Dyer Promise, you'd have to sacrifice both stability and you'd have to accept a higher zoom to reach the same range as a Fatebringer with no perks. It's not even close. The slightly lower aim assist of Fatebringer will easily get fixed by opening shot Eye of the Storm or just a targeting mod on your helmet. On mouse and keyboard, the aim assist isn't even that noticeable. You can choose to min-max the timeless Fatebringer whichever way you want, so if handling is the main thing for you, go right ahead. Fatebringer is the clear winner in the kinetic slot. Its only obvious competition is the adept palindrome in the energy slot. Again, with the adept palindrome you can get slightly better stats. However, the performance of the adept palindrome and the Fatebringer are very similar. 
Explosive payload on the Fadebringer gives you more flexibility to make your plays. Admittedly, the palindrome does have a couple tricks up its sleeve, like high impact reserves, overflow, and ricochet rounds. But in any case, I think you should have both a good time loss fate bringer and a good adept palindrome, as they are the best in their respective slots. Which one you use, in my opinion, should be determined by your favorite special weapon you want to pair with them. Finally, let me give you my recommendations for the roles on fate bringer. Conveniently, once you obtain the Time Loss version and once you clear Master Atheon, you'll be able to farm Time Loss variants of the Fate Bringer just by purchasing it using Spoils of Conquest. I'd start out the Fate Bringer to have a good mix of stability, range, and handling, depending on what you feel is most valuable to you. For PC players, it's also very reasonable to max out the range, since you really won't feel the downsides of lower stability. However, it makes a lot of sense to go a different round too. On the time loss variant, your masterwork boosts all of your stats, so you can actually go for perks which benefit all of your stats. You'll end up with a well-rounded Fatebringer, which can work extremely nicely. While range on any hand can is super important, its value is indeed slightly diminished by explosive payload, so that you have more freedom to min-max your Fatebringer the way you want to. Now on the topic of perks, obviously I think explosive payload is a necessity. Though on the time loss version you have the luxury of getting a second random perk in the third column, and I wanted to give you the alternatives to explosive payload. I really enjoy killing wind since it will bump your range, handling and movement speed after a kill. A well statted fate bringer with killing wind will give you a very smooth shooting experience. Tunnel Vision not my personal favorite, since for me, Killing Wind does the exact same job, just much better, but I do hear it's quite nice for controller players. Finally, Thresh actually rolls in the third column on Fatebringer, which can be nice for some fringe super farm builds, but to me the other perks I mentioned are more valuable. Rewind Rounds and Osmosis are both completely pointless in PvP, so avoid them. In the right column, the time loss variant of the Fatebringer natively comes with Firefly. To me, Firefly is quite wasted since the AoE damage is already being dealt by explosive payload. Also, the reload boost can easily be mimicked by reloader mods on your gauntlets. I think that the best perk by far is opening shot. More range and more magnetism on the first shot is very strong. If you opt for an adept range mod or anything which isn't Icarus script, you'll still have excellent in-air accuracy on the first shot, thanks to opening shot. This beautifully synergizes with the main strength of the explosive payload perk, dealing high damage at long range. If you pair this with a high impact sniper, you'll have a very easy time cleaning up body shots across the map. Alternatives here are either Eye of the Storm, which will give you a significant accuracy boost when you're wounded, and of course the tried and true kill clip for more leniency on subsequent kills. Curiously, as far as I know, the only other 140 RPM hand can in the game with access to kill clip and explosive payload is the Sunset Kindled Orchid. It's quite a nice combo. On your second kill, you'll be doing more damage per shot, which yet again increases your flinch output. The remaining perks, Frenzy and Adrenaline Junkie, are very bad choices for PvP and I'd advise avoiding them. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments if you got lucky with your time loss Fatebringer. I'll make sure to provide you with a live commentary using the Fatebringer so you can get a good impression of its performance in game. But this is all I got for you today and I will see you in the next one.